two. One, one, two. Three, two. One, two, five. Three, two. Four, three, two. Number one. One over. One over. One over. Three, over. three, two. Check to three. Check to three. Number one. One, carry one, two. One, one, three. One, one, three, two. Three, two. One, like it. Hey, what's up guys? It's Flip from Fight Life Media. We're down at the Throwdown Training Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here with uh, Cameron Dipley. Um, Cameron, for the, for the fans out there who don't really know who you are, tell them a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background. Um, well, I started, uh, I've been martial arts since I was a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been doing uh, all, kind of, all kinds of different stuff. We got Taekwondo, Jeet Kune Do, um, all kinds of different things. Um, I got into MMA like 2001, 2002, just high school, watching with my friends, best around the backyard, I kickboxed a little bit. And then in 2003, um, had a friend that trained at a Las Vegas Combat Club that uh, tapped me out a couple times, who got into jiu-jitsu. I wanted to be Chuck Liddell actually when I first started. As much as I'm into jiu-jitsu now, I wanted to be the stand-up guy. Um, but I think it was probably the, the culture at that gym. It was mostly a jiu-jitsu school. The you know Brazilians created it was uh, Ricardo Perez and Sergio Pena. Ricardo Perez's school of it, uh, originally, and uh, Sergio Pena came in because he was Ricardo's main instructor, and they had a school. Um, and it was just uh, a good culture there, you know. So it got me really into jiu-jitsu. I mean, that, that was kind of became my focus. Um, became really obsessed with jiu-jitsu. There were so many good guys there at the time. There was you know Frank Mir, Roy Nelson. Um, Forest was down there. Combat Club was a big school for more heavyweight guys than the uh, lighter weight. It was, you know, John Lewis's and then that split into Cobra Kai and John Lewis's and how all the gyms worked. Um, but we had the heavyweights for the most for MMA. Um, and then my two instructors got a little beef split up. Um, so around 2006, I think, I was a purple or brown belt. Um, I started, I opened my own school. Um, it's called Legion Jiu Jitsu. Um, and then I also um, trained with Forrest. He asked me to be a uh, coach for his team on the show, um, The Ultimate Fighter. Um, and then kind of took off from there, you know what I mean? I got a bunch of guys that from that show kind of had me help coach them. Um, and then as, that, as coaching kind of progressed, I really got more into fighting because I competed jiu-jitsu the whole time. I was real focused on competing jiu-jitsu, but always had uh, fighting as kind of my goal. So that's what so a lot of guys are under the impression, I guess, or a lot of fans are under the impression that that you started off jujitsu, you know, kind of the way a lot of a lot of jujitsu guys kind of do it. They start off jujitsu, they love jujitsu, and they kind of fall into MMA. So your passion was actually MMA, but you were just mm -hmm. in a jujitsu heavy school that kind of. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was, it was my, my passion was MMA, as, it was really, as far as training. Um, that was always kind of my, my not kind of, it is my focus with Jiu-Jitsu, was I was always concerned about how it was going to work in a fight. Because that's why, you know, you get into Jiu-Jitsu, everyone got into Jiu-Jitsu originally because we all saw Ways Gracie or, you know, whoever else, and, and like, okay, Jiu-Jitsu gives you this in a fight, you know, and now MMA is different, so you need a bunch of different things, you don't just need Jiu-Jitsu. But that's why you get into it, because it's, uh, you know, a self-defense art that works. And uh, my, or, you know, Ricardo Perez was actually really big about that. Every time I competed, he's like, you know, this is training for the future, which, which is true. You know, I'm trying to progress, fighting as my main thing. He knew that about me, that uh, just had to build myself up, had to compete a lot. Because fighting, fighting's a big step. I think one thing with it being popular right now, there's a lot of guys that are jumping into it really fast and are, in my opinion, training. You know, they're training enough to get into it, no problem. But they're not building a big, you know, understanding of the game. They're really trying to be like, oh, I want to fight, and expect to do it six months or a year. Where this sport's a triathlon, man. You know what I mean? As much as I've been doing, I, I, I felt like I had to get to a certain level in jujitsu alone just to compete, let alone jujitsu striking, wrestling. But right. you know. I mean, it is rare. Um, just, just to even see that, because it is like you said, you do see a lot of people that they, they really do jump kind of in head first to say. You know, I could pick up. Mm -hmm. I picked up football in high school in six months. And I played my first game, and I had a great high school, you know, football career or something. But you know, in your opinion, what's what's a good training time before you actually jump into the cage? You about a year. You when know. I think like football is a good point with that because that's an important thing. It depends what sports people play growing up. You know what I mean? Like people that that maybe like a hockey, football wrestling, those are all more one-on-one -on -one combative sports where I do feel like it translates to some degree and guys, the, the competitive atmosphere is similar where guys can fight sooner, you know what I mean? So 
depending on their background, that answer could be a little different. So that circumstance, the guy who wrestled and played football, I, to me, it's still at least, you know, to, again, they box or did something before, but without anything else, at least like year, year and a half, but just doing it. Just, just, because the, the problem to me is in a, is it, it's not about competing early because there's leagues, you know, there's different levels of guys, there's all that kind of stuff. Um, it's about training to get to a certain level. When you've got to compete all the time, you're not training to understand the thing. You're training to beat somebody already. You know what I mean? Right. So to me, that being said, guys jump in and start competing right away. It just, they you get, you lose kind of the understanding for the arts and the different stuff. It's all about, about competing and, you know, getting in that atmosphere rather than martial arts and learning and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's, you know, progressing as a person has to be the first part and then you kind of... You know, so so it's, it's similar to kind of being a throwback in a way where you, you kind of you take that traditional martial arts perspective in it where yeah. you gotta you gotta learn to crawl before you walk. Exactly. And and you basically yeah. wanna get your, your base solid before you kinda move on up. Absolutely. And I think I think that's for just out of respect for the sport, you know, as it as it progresses. Um, I think a big thing is it's still growing so much. We don't know. But but have respect for the sport and train and understand it. Just just you know, you see guys get hurt a bunch it's dangerous, it's fighting. You know what I mean? You see guys that yes, you are tough enough to get in there. You know, that's a good thing. You've got heart, you're ready to, to fight. And I respect that, but you've got to respect the sport and understand what's going on, you know, I think the long what what are your goals essentially like moving forward if, if you're like you say you're, you're t trying to take more of a focus on, mm -hmm. on your career as a fighter what what are your goals let's say the next the goal is two years get in the UFC play in some, you know what I mean? get to that level and get in the UFC um, and then take it from there you know but that's the first goal is that's that's the show right now that's where you want to be that's who you want to be with so work hard whether it's you know earn my fights and, and get in or hopefully a show comes around and try out for the show and get in um, but we'll, whatever it takes okay do uh, well, you have any fights that are you know on the horizon right now or? um not currently looking though definitely training all the time looking for a fight had a couple um, earlier this year that fell through and then a couple um, tough ones that came up kind of a little too short notice but uh, but figuring that side of it out too you know um, always training and looking for fights right now especially for me even I feel like when I get to that level it's gonna be a year-round job for me I love it too much I'm not I'm never gonna be a, a seasonal kind of guy yeah. um, what's what's your favorite thing like I mean the, the coolest thing that happened to you probably just like living the fight life you know um, being out there whether whether it was like in training outside of here just any cool experience that you've had honestly living the fight life as I think about it you know what I mean that's the biggest thing where I'm very I've got to be very fortunate it's from from a young age um, I basically like 22 yeah, I've got to live that life full time. You know what I mean? And that's one where, you know, through to getting a coach, through my my instructors that, that brought me up and, and let me teach class um, all the way through now, it's that I was able to, you know, from getting in college and dropping out of college, do a full time and uh, be involved with all these great guys. You know what I mean? That's what's it's having a lot of a lot of tougher older brothers to teach you a lot of stuff. Um, and I get to do that every day. You know what I mean? So that's right. And, and now, I mean, you're probably you probably hit it right at the right spot too. If you think about it, because it's right when that when that that wave started to kind of yeah. build up, and it's like it's like you're riding that wave. Totally the right. Time. Yeah. No, I'm excited, man. I think you know the sports for the several years only going to grow, and hopefully, you know, get my get my shot out there and work hard. And, Grow with it. That's the idea. All right. You got uh, anything to say to the fans? Other than that, uh, um, any sponsors you want to thank? Anything? Yeah. No. To to fans, just you know, keep loving the sport. Keep keep uh, uh, buying pay per views and, and shirts and stuff, and, and being involved and train. You know, guys that uh, are interested in it, just go down and train. That way, you kind of understand what's going on a little bit better. Um, I've got to thank you know a lot of people. Go down training center. Wade McCoy. Um, my parents, my friends, my family, you know, I got a lot of, I'm fortunate, you know, you guys for, for shooting this, you know, I really appreciate you guys coming down. Yeah, um, another guy that I want to thank, a uh, big part of, you know, as I'm coming up, figuring all this stuff out, is a good friend of mine and a big part of my coaching staff. His name is uh, Steve Knockwalter. And he's big on, uh, he's a big, uh, he's a psych coach, okay? He's, you know, a professional psychologist, understands behavior really well. Um, and he's also kind of an organizational, helps me get my team and my camp together. Um, so he's a general organizational and uh, psych coach. And he's been a big part of, you know, my training, my camps, and getting ready for fights. So he, he's a, a guy that I definitely need to thank too.
um, as well as all my students. My students are probably my 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 number one training partners. You know, you get a lot. Of, you have to get your your uh, cross training with high level guys. So you're always testing yourself and that kind of stuff. But uh, my students are the guys that I spend the most time with and drill with, and they're the ones I get better with. So you know, they're uh, a big part of my training too. All right, Kevin. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate you guys having uh, Kevin Diffley. He's a jiu-jitsu coach, up-and-coming fighter, uh, out of Throwdown, Las Vegas, and the uh, Las Vegas uh, the Throwdown Training Center. Awesome guys. That's it for us. Have a good day.